so we must understand that there are differences and i must respect that differences and then find a common ground from where i can fight the opposition whenever these english commentators and all they speak our names you know they kill our names you know <laughs> for that we have to take revenge you know <laughs> so we'll also kill their uh, language so can we say that only hinduism can be termed as sanatan dharma swami we believe that everything has been done done by bhagavan so going by that argument everything must be hindu jans will be taunting us we have a one god you are having so many gods adian means me the servant in that process we forget that the religion itself is there for protecting us namaskaram welcome to this episode of swairalapam where i have with me two of my students this is madhava shrinivas ramanuj das ji and with him is uh, ragunathan they are uh, interested in studying shivaishnava sampradayam uh, so i thought maybe they can pose some questions which may be useful for uh, all the people who follow sanatana dharma and answer them so this is this episode let's uh, get into the episode adiyen ramanuj dasan adiyen 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 ramanuj dasan so we have collected these questions uh, from a lot of our friends and the groups and uh, all of they wanted the questions to be answered by some vidwans so here we are here are we with the questions so with a very common question and the very basic question from uh, everyone is what is sanatana dharmam what is dharmam and what is sanatana dharmam okay so this is a very basic question for that we need to understand that dharma is a sanskrit word and this sanskrit word has multiple meanings to it but in this context dharma means anything which has been prescribed by the vedas okay where do i get this definition from that is from the jaiminiya sutras jaimini was a rishi he was a disciple of vedavyasa himself he has written purva mimamsa shastra there he starts his uh, uh, mimamsa shastram by saying athato dharma jignyasa i am here going to start speaking about dharma he says then a question arises what is dharma so he answers that question by this sutra chodana lakshano artho dharma he defines what dharma is okay usually we hear that anything which sustains everything is called dharma so that is one kind of explaining what dharma is dharyate uh, anena iti dharma everything sustains through dharma but what is that so jemini explains that by saying chodana lakshano arto dharma chodana means vedic orders so anything ordered by the vedas uh, is called dharma chodana is the order that thing which has been ordered by the vedas is called chodana lakshana and it must have some result to it okay so basically you can understand that an example of dharma would be giving donation okay you do some danam you do some donation you give some donation okay now vedas prescribe you to give some donation okay and you know that this donation will yield you results at some point of time in future maybe in this life or another life but it is going to give you some result and it has been prescribed by the, by the vedas so it be a yaga homa dana whatever it is okay prescribed by the vedas and fruitful it is called dharma from there how does this word called dharma denote a religion okay so every action is a dharma and the set of actions prescribed by the vedas they can also be called dharma because they are just all dharm- dharmic rituals so that religion which prescribes these kind of rituals 
has been denoted to be sanatana dharma dharma okay sanatan the word sanatan means eternal so we believe that all these dharmas they are eternal they are eternal truths and also we believe we believe that this particular religion this is also eternal okay so it has no beginning it has no end so it is called sanatana dharma and denoting this religion as sanatana dharma is not a very common feature in the ancient texts in the recent times we started uh, using this word called sanatana dharma to uh, you know explain this religion okay so this is dharma and this is sanatana dharma okay so can we say that only hinduism can be termed as sanatana dharma swami see according to jaimini jaimini is not actually defining any religion okay he is speaking about specific actions now you have brought out the word hinduism the word hindus was not given to us by ourselves yes it is not been used in our ancient texts to denote this particular people okay so it was a name given to uh, these people by outsiders okay and uh, with a geographical connotation to that okay so now but i understand where your question comes from today it does not have any geographical uh, yes. relation okay it has no relation to geography today we are called hindus so as i was telling before the word dharma has not been used to denote a religion in ancient texts it is a very uh, recent feature okay so if you want to use that word sanatana dharma to denote whatever you call hinduism it's your wish because we don't have any ancient texts which talk about uh, sanatana dharma clearly as a religion okay so we can consider sanatana dharma and hindu in hinduism to be same because both are words which have uh, come up very recently so swami then uh, what is the base of this sanatana dharmam or hinduism what do you mean by base that uh, like dharma is something some actions so what is the base of that action or what is the base of uh, this group of people who call themselves hindus you know maybe you want to ask what is one thing that unites all these people you know from where does the, all these arise so basically when we were talking about dharma we had seen that anything ordered by the vedas is called dharma so if you want to find what is the real base that is vedas again so from the vedas arise all these multiple uh, sections of hinduism okay so one thing which unites us and one thing which can be called to be the basis of every sampradaya in hinduism is vedas okay so vedas i think uh, will be the right answer for this so that in the hinduism itself we have lot of uh, religions like if we go to politics there are right wingers left wingers socialists so in hinduism we have so many philosophies so is it a religion or it's a umbrella of uh, different religions okay see uh, what is a religion what is a religion just we'll look it up okay see religion definition it says a particular system of faith and worship you know a pursuit or interest followed with great devo- devotion okay so there are some uh, meanings given the belief in and worship of a superhuman power or powers especially a god or gods okay this is one uh, definition a particular system of faith and worship and we have these kind of definitions but just think how do we define something to be a single religion now see if you take the abrahamic religions you have judaism you have christianity you have islam there are many things common between them right you can find uh, you know the christian priests they say that we are not targeting muslims for conversion 
because they are very close to us okay so do we do not uh, target them for conversion they say so they have so many factors binding them okay but they are still called different religions okay now coming to hinduism i'll just explain to you in hinduism we have this binding factor called vedas sure but the theology or uh, what we practice there are many differences among these sampradayas which fall under hinduism let me explain with you uh, explain to you with an example see there is this philosophy called advaita philosophy in advaita basically the belief is that only brahman is absolutely true absolutely real and all other things they are not true they are illusion maya mithya okay this is their belief advaita in the advaita philosophy when you come to vishishta advaita philosophy we believe that paramatma that is brahman it is true its attributes are true and the sentient beings called jivatmas they are true and the non sentient being non sentient beings or non sentient things achetana they are also true see think about this for an advaiti everything he sees is an illusion for a vishishta advaiti everything i see is is true okay so the theory explaining reality itself is vastly different so see if this is their theory then they want to just understand that for an advaiti he needs to understand that he is uh, not completely different from brahman and just he has to he has to attain oneness with brahman that is his goal and he'll have a certain path to achieve his goal okay now coming to my philosophy that is vishishta advaita philosophy for me what is my goal my goal is to serve god eternal service is my goal and i have my own path i call it sharanagati so see usually if you take a religion you have three important things in that one is called tattva the second one is called hita the third one is called purushartha what is tattva what is the theory of reality what do you believe in is called tattva what you want to achieve is called purushartha and the means by which you are going to achieve that is called hita okay so in advaita and vishishta advaita you will find that we are completely different we don't have the same tattvas we don't have the same purushartha nor we have the same path to achieve that purushartha so can you uh, you know tell that this both of these religions are same can you say that they are one so i would argue that in abrahamic religions they have more similarities you know but we are you know brought under one religion or we are known to be following one religion but we have vast differences so there is a lot of diversity so it is up to people however they look at it you can uh, call hinduism as a religion if you take uh, a religion to follow a single text like we have vedas which bind us all together so you may call it call us one religion but then you must also call all the abrahamic religions to be one because like you know uh, in judaism and christianity they believe in the uh, old testament right they have something common yes uh, does it make them one religion no. if yes then yes for me if no no for me okay so this is my stand but it's just a word right religion is just a word it doesn't uh, mean much so you may call it a religion or you may not call it a religion but you must understand that there is a unifying factor and there is also diversity okay these days uh, we see like buddhists those who follow buddhism as well as jainism they are being classified into sanatana dharma or hinduism hmm. so can we classify them into sanatana dharma or uh, should we since they don't believe in vedas should we keep them out of the fold of sanatana dharma swami uh, 
you know you have all this in a question paper you have short questions long questions everything right so this is a long answer question so see for me i identify myself as the servant of lord shiva narayan okay so for me my identity is being a servant of god okay that is my very uh, proximate identity okay then i identify myself as someone who believes in the vedas and then i may identify myself as a theist okay someone who believes in god so you know i am a theist and i am a uh, vaidika and then i am a vaishnava these are all my identities so there is a very proximate identity identity and then i have some identity which is larger one and then i have something larger then i can identify myself as a human and uh, a being so on okay so in this way if there is something against us which wants to eradicate us then i would stand with my you know uh, fellow beings like when someone wants to fight against sanatana dharma then i will find myself as a sanatani who will fight against that you know when someone someone uh, wants to fight against everything else like theism then i will you know uh, hold hands with all the other theist uh, people like it may be christians or even others so that's when the need arises for, for us to you know uh, understand our identity or expand it or do whatever okay now the word hinduism itself is not it doesn't mean much for us you know and bringing them into hinduism or not doesn't mean much you know what is the context where do you want them to be joining with us where do you don't want them to join with us that is a complete different question altogether so i would say that when the need arises yes they are part of us when there is no need then it doesn't matter i won't say they are not part of us it doesn't matter okay and when talking about sanatana dharma going by the definition of jaimini i would rather argue that they won't come under sanatana dharma because they don't believe in the vedas and they also try to negate vedas they try to tell that the vedas are not authentic or something like that so they are against vedas so i wouldn't consider them to be sanatana dharmis hinduism is probably different word but uh, if you think that hinduism and sanatana dharma are same then i would say buddhist and uh, jainists would be out of that league so if they are out of the fold then uh, they are as equal as the abrahamic religions so can we say that swami or since there is a binding factor called karma theory uh, for them as well should we include them here yeah that's again you know you can uh, expand your identity as the need arises okay now if you ask me as you told as you, uh, you have mentioned that there is something uh, very near to us i mean they are more near to us because of karma theory they believe in rebirth uh, they believe in uh, you know the law of karma whatever you do will come and uh, uh, give its fruit at some point of time so there are some things which are common to us and uh, you know buddhists or jainists okay so there are common things but again while speaking my brain is just thinking like this so if you feel so then we can say you know christians or muslims they believe in a god buddhists or jainists don't believe in a god so you can say they are atheists buddhism is atheist religion okay right so you can say buddhism is atheistic so they are uh, farther to me than the other people you can say that but uh, mostly looking at the practical uh, situation today we won't be saying so because uh, for us buddhism doesn't pose any kind of threat you know so we won't say that but you know we can argue both ways so we one striking feature among the religions of uh, this bharat bhumi is 
the difference yet between body and atma yes uh, but again we had charvaka also mm-hmm. so people say uh, there is a common view that even if you do not believe in god still you are a hindu see again the word hindu you can use that word to denote anyone okay <laughs> we don't have any uh, scriptural scriptural reference to that you know hindu is a word which has come you can use that to denote anyone that's your wish okay but again what was the standpoint of what was the view of our uh, elders like uh, those people who lived long uh, long back see there has never been persecution of nastikas those who did not believe in god so hinduism or sanatan dharmis uh they were always you know okay with the fact that there were people who had different beliefs okay so i i won't say uh, atheism was encouraged i wouldn't say atheism was encouraged but they were not persecuted either so hindus were tolerant of these nastikas and they considered that to be a system of belief that is called charvaka matam but i don't think it will fall under sanatana dharma okay it was part of the indian land you know even while speaking about darshanas there are many darshanas we say astika darshana nastika darshana so astika darshana are those philosophies or schools of philosophy which believe in the authenticity of vedas they may not believe in a god but they may still believe in the authenticity of vedas and they will be called astika uh, matam astika darshan and there are people who are nastikas who are they those who do not believe in the authenticity of vedas they are called nastikas so even if they were there i don't think they would be considered to be part of hinduism or part of sanatan dharma and just you know when we when you were asking this like is buddhism part of this uh, is jainism part of this is uh, charvaka mata part of this i am not very sure about jainism but in buddhism the basic principle is that there is no god okay so by definition it is an atheistic religion it is an atheistic system of belief so if this is a religion what ours is a religion uh, i don't think buddhism being atheistic can be part of us okay and uh, surely not the charvakas surely not the charvakas because coming to buddhism there is some difference you know in buddhism they believe in rebirth so they believe in rebirth so if you can call them religion okay right but how can you call an atheistic uh set of people to be part of religion yeah. so it, it was part of bharat but it was not part of sanatana dharma the atheism is very much against the concept of religion itself yeah so how can you bring all those together you know they were part of this land right that there is no doubt in it and people were tolerant uh, regarding that that doesn't mean that it is part of or uh, you know sanatana dharma i don't feel so but and again all these things are these are you know we don't have clear definition of sanatana dharma we don't have clear de- definition of hinduism so if you like you may call ah oh, it is part of hinduism you may say it is part of sanatana dharma but usually sanatana dharma is that uh, you know religion which believes in the authenticity of vedas that is what my view is because usually it is called vaidika mata vaidika matam it was used to be called and then nowadays we use the word sanatana dharma so according to me we need not call them sanatanis okay but most of the hindus these these days consider buddha as a, a avatar of vishnu if we consider that factor can we bring buddhism into the fold of hinduism swami you were saying most of the people yes maybe everyone <laughs> everyone <laughs> considers buddha to be an incarnation because even in old wars prasurams we say kala vedatte kondu poi bhagavan took an avatar as buddha okay so this is something everyone agrees upon maybe there are some set of people uh, who may not agree but again does that make buddhism part of hinduism see 
वॉट एवर आर स्क्रिप्चर से दे से दैट भगवान टुक द अवतार ऑफ बुद्धा टू डिस्करेज सम पीपल फ्रॉम डूइंग वेदिक रिचुअल्स यू नो यूजली द स्टोरी गोज लाइक दिस इट इज सेट दैट सम असुरास यू नो हम क्रोल पीपल हम सम बैड पीपल दे स्टार्ट यूजिंग वेदिक रिचुअल्स टू इंक्रीज देयर पावर एंड अटैक अदर्स सो भगवान सो अरे वी हैड गिवन द वेदिक नॉलेज टू दीज पीपल सो दैट दे विल यूज दैट फॉर गुड बट नाउ दे आर यूजिंग दैट फॉर नेगेटिविटीज सो भगवान केम टू दी अवतार ऑफ बुद्धा एंड ही डिस्करेज दैम बै प्रीचिंग by giving arguments against the vedas so that was what bhagavan did so even though that uh, particular religion has been started by bhagavan himself that doesn't mean that it was be part of sanatana dharma because it is again sanatana dharma that bhagavan preached that religion for a particular uh, uh, for a particular uh, set of people at that point of time and later on many people were attracted by the uh, philosophies of buddha and they came to that so never do we uh, believe that all the people who are following buddhism are rakshasas or non please don't take it like that bhagavan came and took avatara to discourage them but later on some people were uh, you know attracted by the philosophies and they took up on uh, they took uh, they accepted the religion okay so uh, you know everything in this world has been done by bhagavan you know there is not a single philosophy or single religion that has not been propagated by bhagavan we believe that everything has been done done by bhagavan so going by that argument everything must be hindu so as devarir said that hindus are tolerant from olden days for me even now we are tolerant since our people those who belong specifically to the sanatana dharma they always say that all the gods are equal all the religions are equal we still many of our people continues the same argument but if we see the people from Ab- abrahamic religions they never say that uh, our god is as equal as the god of hinduism or the god of uh, the other religions as well so should we change our mindset or is this the right way to think for me there is a lot to say here see sometimes since we are you know called hindus we forget that we are more than hindus see i follow a particular sampradaya which was propagated by sri ramanuja acharya so that is my sampradaya which i follow strictly okay sometimes people feel that i am not a ramanuji i am not an advaiti i am not some other person i am a hindu but in reality you are nothing actually because hinduism is not a religion of its own hinduism is just an umbrella term given to many sampradayas okay so you can be a ramanuji and you can be a hindu at the same time but you can't say i am not a ramanuja i am not an advaita i am not this i am not that but i am but i am a hindu that doesn't make any sense so every hindu will be following or every real hindu will be following some sampradaya of the vedic tradition or there are some sampradaya philosophies which may not believe completely in the vedas but there are uh their roots are from the vedas okay they are rooted in the vedas okay so every person needs to understand that he will belong to some sampradaya you may be an advaiti you may be a ramanuji you may be some other some other uh, follower of a sect but there is nothing called i am a hindu so i am tolerant towards everything no there are some sampradayas which feel that worshiping everyone worshiping every god is okay so you may fall into that sampradaya and you may be tolerant but it doesn't mean that every hindu is tolerant that's not uh, our policy like uh, maybe i should not be using the word tolerant 
every hindu will not be worshiping everyone you know tolerance is something else and worshiping is something else okay we can be tolerant towards everything but what i worship must be prescribed by a sampradaya which has its roots in the vedas okay so for a person he must understand which sampradaya he follows or he belongs to and then try to follow that particular sampradaya so if you ask me i am a vishishtadvaiti and i believe in vaishnavism that is what was propagated by ramanujacharya so i worship uh, lord vishnu i go to vishnu temples i worship the god i do service to him and that is my that is my you know uh, kartavyams that is what i do but do i visit other temples no we are very strict in our rules so we don't visit other temples similarly each sampradaya has its own set of rules you must be following some sampradaya there may be a sampradaya which says you can follow all gods that is okay but there is nothing called hinduism other than these sampradayas you know there must be clarity regarding this okay so but i don't think there will be any sampradaya which says uh, you can go worship uh, uh, you know some other uh, uh, god of a religion or something like christ or something there may be someone who says there are uh, qualities that you can imbibe from christ maybe we don't need christ to give us qualities but there may be some sampradaya we may be tolerant towards that that is a different thing but i don't think there will be any uh, very old sampradaya which would say are jao uh, you go and worship uh, christ or uh, some other god i don't think that is needed so hope the answer is help it uh, remind the adian of a common confusion that uh, hinduism ha- is having lot of gods mm. so some other religions will be taunting us we have a one god mm. you are having so many gods mm. so is hinduism a monotheism or polytheism yeah so this is a very important question see again the question is is hinduism a religion or not <laughs> he spoke about that so if hinduism is a single religion it has a single set of beliefs then we can speak about hinduism being monotheistic or polytheistic in nature but hinduism is not just one religion see there are so many sampradayas under hinduism like i had given the example of advaita and vishishta advaita for an advaiti there is nothing other than brahma sachidananda brahma or nirvishesha brahma whatever there is nothing else so where does the question arise regarding other gods <laughs> man you don't have any other particle you don't have any other thing okay then there is no question of other gods or polytheism so now when we come to vishishta advaita or our sampradaya that has been propagated by ramanujacharya we are monotheistic i'll explain see for us i think monotheism means uh, accepting one creator or believing that there is one creator okay so in our sampradaya we believe that shiva narayana he created he sustains and he destroys he is the one creator and destroyer so i think we are monotheistic do i believe in other gods yes i do believe in other gods i believe that brahma exists shiva exists indra exists yes i do believe in their existence but i believe that in our sampradaya they are subservient to lord shiva narayana so are we monotheistic yes we believe in one creator so we are monotheistic do i believe in the existence of other devatas yes i do believe in other devatas does that make, make me polytheistic no if you want to say that makes you polytheistic you know you are believing in beings which are not natural then we can just pose the same argument towards abrahamic religions who believe in angels and all you haven't seen an angel it is something unnatural so just think like uh, think that are devatas they are like angels i'm not exactly i don't want to confuse people that's not the exact truth but something like that so there are beings that you believe which are uh, you believe in some beings uh, which are unnatural but that doesn't affect your monotheism similarly i believe in thousand crores of devatas that doesn't uh, you know affect my 
monotheism. Okay. Again, does that mean that every sampradaya in Hinduism will be monotheistic? No. We are such a diverse set of people that there will be someone who says that there are many who do creation, etc. So, is Hinduism monotheistic or polytheistic? It doesn't have any answer. There are philosophies which fall under Hinduism which may be monotheistic or polytheistic. And mostly, mostly there are Vaishnavites, there are Shaivites, there are Shaktas and there are many sets of people. And mostly they believe that there is one creator. Okay, there is one creator. The, the way he created, it may vary. But one creator, most of the Sampradayas believe in that. So most of the Sampradayas which come under Hinduism are monotheistic in nature and there are polytheistic uh, philosophies also. And I want to make this point also. See, this, you know, monotheism being something very virtuous and polytheism being something very bad, it doesn't have any basis. It's just a belief, you know. You believe in one God, I believe in many gods. How does that even have it, uh, have, have to do any anything with virtue? So I have put my point. There are many monotheistic philosophies and there are polytheistic. And I don't think monotheism is some kind, uh, some way very virtuous than this. Of course, we can argue about that. But this is the point. So, then with a number of sampradayas, as you mentioned in Sanatana Dharma, so this again leads a confusion for someone who just want to enter the Sanatana Dharma. Then which path to take? Like he must get into Advaita or he must get into Visistha Advaita or Dvaita or some kind of like we just thought like this karma philosophy those like buddhism jainism so that kind of uh, sampradayas yeah. as well yeah yeah see usually let's you know break it down there is a person who wants to learn uh, and follow a sampradaya there is a point here usually if he is from a hindu family there will be some kind of affiliation of that family with some sampradaya. Okay. You can just find uh, that sampradaya and uh, try to learn that sampradaya and follow that. That is one way. If you can't find that sampradaya, then you can just explore many sampradayas in uh, Sanatana Dharma. And also, even if you belong to one sampradaya, uh, it is permitted for you to go to some other sampradaya. Okay. So, if you ask me personally, you know, for everyone, his mother is the best mother. Right. So, if you ask me, for me, Ramanuja sampradaya is the best sampradaya. Because I am aware of that. I know its uh, qualities. I know its uh, uh, tenets and all. So, I would say, know about this sampradaya, Ramanuja sampradaya and try to follow it. If not, you may just you know, know about many sampradayas and uh, follow some sampradaya uh, which will always lead to greater good. Okay. Following any sampradaya in Sanatana Dharma will lead you to the ultimate goal. You may uh, achieve that ultimate goal today or tomorrow. There will be some gap. But uh, following these sampradayas would always uh, give you some uh, you know, give you some benefits for sure. So, I would say, of course, you can choose your own or you can just follow your own or, uh, you know, uh, explore and choose one. If you ask me, my personal opinion would be Ramon Sampradaya, of course. Given the diversity that we have, how can we ensure unity uh, inside the uh, Sanatana Dharma? How can everyone come together and ensure the protection or enrichment of Sanatana Dharma. There are two points I want to make regarding this. Okay. One thing is, we always have this notion that we have to, you know, protect the Sampradaya, protect Hinduism and all. In that process, we forget that the religion itself is there for protecting us. You know, so we are always looking at it like a political game. Hindus go badna chahiye. Hindus must uh, increase in number or something like that. You know, but the reason the religion exists 
is for the welfare of every individual okay so everyone must concentrate on his own sampradaya his own religion and what benefits he gets from that particular religion okay we always think about the group and we stop thinking about the individual but that particular religion is there for you for you to reap the benefits of that religion so i would say know your sampradaya follow that you will reap the benefits of that sampradaya okay this is one point i want to make and then coming to unity see once we know that there is this kind of diversity the only way we can unite is by respecting the differences you know we see are aapka uh, vaishnavism chhod do you leave your vaishnavism you leave your shaivism you leave this you leave that we will all become hindus you know when you are doing that you are just creating a religion you have destroyed shaivism you have destroyed vaishnavism you have destroyed this you have destroyed that you know that is not the way forward you have to preserve everything of this religion you have to preserve vaishnavism you have to preserve shaivism you have to preserve n number of philosophies that exist there may be a philosophy which is followed by just a single family that must also be preserved by them okay so we have to preserve everything in this process we must understand that there are differences okay so i am a vaishnavite i am a very strict vaishnavite and my principles do not allow me to enter any other temple okay is it wrong for me no this is my way of life okay now there is a shaivite his sampradaya preaches that he must not enter a vishnu temple now some time at some point of time we both are attacked by some person we both are attacked by some person now we have to get together to protect ourselves so now should i destroy my vishnu temple and he his shiva temple and we must build some hindu temple is that a way forward no i know that i cannot get into his temple i also know that he cannot come to my temple so i have to find a common platform from where we both can fight so by doing that i will ensure that i am protecting my philosophies and i will ensure that he is also protecting his uh, principles so this won't be possible if i understand and he doesn't understand that if he is always worried about me not entering his temple then we won't be able to uh, you know unite and if i enter his temple and i leave my principles then what am i fighting for so we must understand that there are differences and i must respect that differences and then find a common ground from where i can fight the opposition okay so i have just given an example between two sampradayas there are n number of sampradayas maybe innumerable innumerable i don't know there are many religions that are you know coming up even as we speak okay right so they are offshoots of a sampradaya so we can have uh, you know we can have unity between these sampradayas only by understanding and respecting the differences i always give this example you know there are you know some uh, some families which live in a street you know there is some litigation that uh, they have to now face they have to face something the families of uh, they are uh, of a particular street they are facing that now will they think that now that we all have to face something let's destroy all our buildings let's build a big mansion which is uh, all over the street and then we'll start fighting will that happen no i can live in my house with my family he can live in his house with his family and even then i can fight together i have to find the common place from where i have to fight together okay i don't say you must not compromise on anything sometimes maybe we need to compromise but it must be a conscious uh, effort on your part to compromise something for the greater good 
but it must not be like i will compromise everything may i may be whatever are my principles i will compromise everything and fight for something bigger that should not be our uh, way of uh, working so my the biggest problem in the world in any religion is with the numbers these days for me always is always <laughs> always with always uh then even in india for me these days as you said that number is not the criteria every philosophy targets every individual to grow but few abrahamic religions or some other religions to gain the control they are just they are just targeting on increasing the number hmm. we are little confused so what is the message which you give to the current generation to improve themselves individually and along with the society as well yeah see i want to clarify one thing here okay i never meant that numbers don't play a part okay that is that was not my uh, argument rather i was saying that too much concentration is on numbers you must also look at the upliftment individual upliftment and also the society so give importance to both things that's my point i never say uh, numbers don't play a role numbers do play a role they have always played a role okay so numbers do matter and how do you increase numbers <laughs> <laughs> you know see r is only the hindu society obliged to uh, you know uh, be settle with uh, two children or before it was uh in tamil they used to say naam iruvar namak iruvar we both and uh, we two and the forest two and uh, later on it became naam iruvar namak oruvar we two and forest one okay and uh, sometimes people feel child rearing is too tough so we won't have children at all so that is not the right way moving forward and there is this saying name kolandai namakken kolandai okay <laughs> so we ourselves are children why do we need children okay so that is not the very uh, right way to approach these things so if there is some demographic change we need to address that so you must concentrate on the individual and also on the society because that society is going to protect this individual okay so you have to concentrate on both and coming to your question what was the question so if we concentrate on uh, individual developments for me then there is a bigger threat to the society as well yeah that's what i answered you know bigger threat how more children <laughs> and okay having more children that's on a lighter vein but again you know you have to equip yourself the only way to equip yourself is to know what is there in sanatana dharma see whatever we have spoken today is very vague it is very you know uh, like it is not very pinpointed but when you come to a sampradaya you can become more specific about things so i would say that everyone needs to understand what is sampradaya is everyone needs to understand what is sampradaya is and then uh, accordingly he has to uh practice what he learned and then you have to preach that your ch- to your children so the demographic problem is due to conversion and uh, due to the population rise of the other uh, religions okay one thing have how how many how much ever they are having children we must have equal number of children the growth must be equal okay and then regarding conversion we have to uh, equip ourselves with the knowledge practice that uh, to an extent and and then also preach that to the other generations the next generation or to other people so preaching has to gain importance okay see usually hinduism has never been a religion of conversion okay they were like uh, everyone is going according to their karma so they will at some point of time attain what they need to attain 
so they never gave importance to uh, conversion but now when your enemy is trying to convert then you have to defend yourself no so yeah. till the other kingdom they had swords you can also fight with them with swords once they have equipped themselves with guns what do you do okay. upgrade <laughs> you have to you know start uh, acquiring guns and then train similarly once you are facing this problem then you have to equip, equip yourself how are you going to uh, address this problem so i would say learn a lot learn a lot learn a lot many of advaitis i know many of my friends who are you know who probably recognize themselves as identify themselves as hindus but they don't know what sampradaya they are following are they advaitis or vishishta advaitis they know nothing they know nothing so first step you have to know something you know when we travel in a train suddenly a nun comes and she says she says some things four things about her uh, religion and she'll say this is the best religion most of us wouldn't be able to answer anything we don't know what the law of karma means how can that be used in our life you know nothing we know nothing about our sampradaya people know a lot about politics but they don't know about sampradaya so everyone must know what their sampradaya is uh, how they must lead their life according to their sampradaya and then start preaching also that must be uh, the way forward when it comes to following sanatan dharmam as uh, they were it said uh, most of the people today i are... want to clarify one thing maybe our viewers may be confused by these two words adiyan devarir okay <laughs> <laughs> these two words are tamil words okay i am talking to the audience here these two words are english word uh, tamil words adiyan means me the servant so usually in shivaishnava sampradaya when we are speaking to other devotees we use the word adiyan instead of i so whenever these people were saying adiyan just uh, replace that with an i okay and when they were saying devarir devarir is uh, a way to uh, mention someone with uh, you know uh, with respect so you, you can replace devarir with you okay so adiyan and uh, devarir i and you and sometimes adiyan adiyan is also used to tell okay 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 so as devarir said uh, following most of the people today are political hindus they will say garv se kaho hum hindu hain but they will know uh, they will not be knowing anything about sanatan dharmam or about their sampradayam or if at all someone follows going to temple doing some puja at home minimum puja and if their wishes are not fulfilled why god did this to me or is there a god they will have a disbelief so uh, what's their views in uh, view on following sanatana dharma see yes i understand i think your question is people go to temple do some puja and identify themselves as hindus you know and all they want from going to temple is getting some uh, relief or uh, getting some results like i didn't study for exam i went to temple will that give a result it's not going to give a result but they want result from that and when they don't get the desired result they turn uh, atheists this is for some people okay but here i would say the main problem which is causing this is lack of knowledge there are not many sampradayas which preach you just go to temple uh, do some prayer you will get all your results that's all all the sampradayas of hinduism or most of the sampradayas of hinduism are there for liberation there may be different kinds of liberation each philosophy has its own definition of liberation but they are there for liberation which we call moksha okay so if you start learning sampradaya you will start understanding that these material benefits are not going to last long you have to aim for something larger than that and that is liberation and when you understand those concepts and when you understand what is the path towards liberation then you will get a clarity regarding 
what you will get and what you won't because in our sampradaya we believe in or in our religion we believe in karma theory so if you have done some very bad sin in this birth or in previous births you may pray for 100 years and even then your prayer may not be answered sometimes by bhagavan's lord's grace your prayers may be answered but there is no guarantee regarding that so we must clearly understand what our sampradaya preaches that will give you confidence that will let you uh, you know uh, have a grip over your sampradaya no one can you know just come and knock you over from sampradaya and whatever happens in your life you will know how to uh, you know face it mentally how you face it emotionally so you need to understand sampradaya it may be advaita it may be vishishta advaita it may be anything else but you must understand what your sampradaya preaches and have a very uh, good grounding in that sampradaya but again that doesn't mean you must not go to a temple okay you must have both you must have knowledge and you must have presence in places like temples for two reasons one spiritual reasons the second one political reasons as we were talking you need uh, you know some things to you know protect yourself from the uh, out group and you must also uh, have your eyes on your personal development or spiritual development okay so you must visit the temple you must understand what is going on in the temple for your spiritual development and also for the welfare of your uh, sampradaya or the religion okay so you must do everything but with the right kind of understanding right understanding of your particular philosophy sampradaya uh, related to the concept of karma uh, when the foreign travelers came to india they have described uh, the country as a very harmonious country people were not in opposition there was a lot of uh, peace and uh, harmony in the society nowadays we are not having harmony in the society the families are breaking and everyone is at opposition with each other so where is that we have lacked and uh, where we have lacked in uh, sanatan dharma let's assume that they were very harmonious they were very peaceful and now we are not peaceful the facts may be slightly different okay i don't know but uh, usually we have this feeling that we are not very harmonious nowadays one thing i think Uh, which may have uh, a part to play in this is the lack of knowledge you know even in the previous generations you used to we used to you know hear these words prarabdham 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 whatever they faced be it a small struggle or a big struggle they used to say this is the result of something i have done before so they took a responsibility of that suffering which a, which a, they are experiencing okay and then they also believe that you had to travel in the right path to achieve the right result so there are two aspects to, to this when you start understanding the karma theory it just preaches you that whatever you are suffering today whatever you are experiencing today is the result of your past karma so you are responsible for what you are experiencing so you need to buckle up and take responsibility for that and whatever you are going to do today so whatever you experience that is a result of what you did and whatever you are going going to do today will uh, give you the results in the future so you have to do the right things so it explains to you how you have to uh, approach things approach uh, happiness or suffering and it also helps you to uh, take decisions regarding what you need to do now so i think the basic lack of knowledge regarding uh, the karma theory has played a major role in the mindset change of our generation
वन वी आर एंटाइटल्ड आई नीड दिस एंटाइटलमेंट वी हैव और वी बिकम डिस्करेज यू नो अंडरस्टैंडिंग लॉ ऑफ कर्मा एज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल मे बी वी कैन डू ए पॉडकास्ट रिगार्डिंग द बेनिफिट्स ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग कर्मा थियोरी वन मोर क्वेश्चन आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू आस्क द एवरी रीज फॉर मी द पीपल फ्रॉम अदर रिलीजियंस दे डोंट हैव एनी काइंड ऑफ शाई टूवर्ड्स कीपिंग देअर रिलीजियन इंटैक्ट विद दम लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल देल वेर द कैप देल शेव देअर मुस्टैच एंड देल जस्ट ग्रो देअर बियर्ड एंड दे जस्ट वॉन्ट देल वेर सम काइंड ऑफ ड्रस एंड ऑल विच सूट्स देअर रिलीजियन बट आर पीपल दीज डेज दे आर feeling shy to wear the dhoti they are feeling shy to keep the tilak or the pundra all these kind of things and the shika the majorly the shika so previously we feel that all the varnas they used to have shika but nowadays even brahmins they don't even uh, they have lot of shy towards uh, keeping the shika going to office with tirman or the pundra or the tilak so how can we uh, tackle this situation basically even if you look at the television you will find people screaming about hindutva you know <laughs> and people who consider themselves to be hindus you will be seeing them with a shirt with a pant with nothing on their forehead no shika okay that is their belief that is their own right but was this the situation 100 years ago as you said shika is not limited to only brahmanas shika is worn by everyone okay now we have many in shivaishna sampradaya we have people of all varnas you know shivaishna sampradaya is one of the sampradaya which propagated equality uh, way before so that's a different uh, topic altogether but we have people of all varnas wearing a shika okay so ashika or we have tirman we call this urdhva pundram there is tiriya pundram and there are many pundrams okay why don't we wear maybe it is shyness maybe many people don't know that it is mandatory just let me tell you one thing of course we are not going to force anyone to do anything that is not how our religion works but when you go by the shastras the shastras say that you have to tie the shikha you have to tie the knot when uh, did people not tie the knot it was only during some situations like someone dies when there is a you know dead body in the house people did not tie a knot that is called mukta shikha being having an untied shikha okay so having a shika having it tied it was norm if someone did not tie his shika it meant that he was not in the right situation okay but people don't know anything about this they don't know this and they don't know why one must wear his urdhva pundra tilak or something so one thing is ignorance the other one is shyness i would say that everyone has to you know start at some point in uh, our sampradaya you will see some people wearing the shri churana the red line you know uh, wearing that uh, at least start there and then you can wear the whole urdhva pundra and when many of people start doing this okay then i think the companies or those places where they are not uh, you know encouraged they will also understand that this is something hindus follow so we have to allow this so every community has its own traditions like some communities may have mundan they will shave their head or some sort like sanyas and all they will shave their heads you know and there may be some sampradaya we don't know but usually everyone has a shikha everyone must wear something on his forehead it may be tirman like as urdhva pundam or it may be bhasma dharana Uh, that is tripundra dharana it may be gopi chandan it could be anything but you must be proud wearing that and once people start doing that once the trend starts i think the shyness will go away but must start somewhere you know 
we must be proud doing this and again some things that is practical see some people wear a suit just think about the climate conditions in tamil nadu and we say in sri rangam we have three seasons hot very hot very very hot <laughs> that's all when do we have some cold season and you find people wearing suits and going man this dhoti which is very thin of course it has its own disadvantages i don't say it is completely you know it has only good uh, advantages no it has its own disadvantages but let us wear this dhoti proudly okay at least when you come to the temple wear a dhoti if you look at the temple you will find hundreds of devotees entering you know thousands of devotees but those people who are interested i am not saying it must be mandatory or something maybe it can be mandatory we can do that also but again it must come from the individual right the individual must know that yes this is something that has been given to me by my culture so i'll wear a dhoti i'll wear my attire i'll wear my pundra i'll wear my shikha and i'll put a shikha so the pride must come from inside one thing again the same answer no more about your sampradaya you will uh, you know eventually start feeling proud about it and shyness will go away just think about it we speak about you know women getting stared you know women they speak about security and all just think about someone like me with this attire going to a railway station or an airport or for a, for to any other place yeah we are stared upon like like everyone is staring at me you know it, it is awkward but does that deter me from doing this no because i know this is my way and this this was the way every single person lived in india 3 4 centuries ago or even 2 centuries ago everyone had a dhoti regardless of varna ashrama everyone had a dhoti everyone had some kind of shikha everyone had some kind of pundra okay so this was how they lived even if you are an atheist you can wear a dhoti you can you know uh, live how your ancestors lived like why must we you know take the culture of some western person or colonizer and wear it with pride so when someone goes to a public place he feels comfortable in a western attire and you know traditional attire you feel shy <laughs> no so the situation must change and it will change only when people start doing that so not only people who are completely spiritual also those who are inclined towards spirituality you can start doing this once a week or whenever you go to temple and then start you know slowly doing that in your uh, other works also we have been discussing about the sampradayas nowadays when we say he is a sampradayik it is told in very wrong way he is a sampradayik person so it is taken in a negative sense hmm. so what is a sampradaya and what is being sampradayik see sampraday is, is basically <coughs> a tradition usually when you go into the etymology of that word diyate iti daya which has been given to you by your previous generation is called sampraday usually the knowledge systems which have been given to us by our previous generations is called sampraday and when you speak about a particular sampradaya you will have a lineage of acharyas through which you have gained that knowledge okay so in our sampradaya we have ranganath bhagavan and then lakshmi devi and then vishwak sen ji so through them we have gained some knowledge it is called knowledge and the way to live and some basic principles regarding the sampradaya so those basic principles which have come to us through a lineage which have been given to us through uh, which has been given to us by our purvacharyas is called sampradaya so this is the basic definition of what sampradaya is and anyone who follows that those principles which have been given to him by his acharyas is called sampradayik this is the definition uh, i don't know how it is negative in any way be proud being a sampradayik that's not wrong it doesn't mean that you have to disrespect someone else so i don't think any sampradaya preaches uh, disrespect towards anyone so worship your god respect everyone else so chinajiyar swami has this 
very famous saying he says sarva uh, swiya aradhana sarva aadarana respect all worship yours so that is one thing we must uh, know so i don't think that is any way in any way wrong being a sampradayik is the best way swami till now we discussed a lot of questions and uh, don't think that we don't have any, some more questions with us we have a lot of questions in our bank <laughs> so also we welcome audience to bring more questions in the comment section below so that we can ask swami and uh, so that we we can make you learn all these things like your doubts may be clarified in some other session which we request swami to take in some other point of time as well so also on behalf of all the people who gave us the questions and on behalf of us on behalf of the audience we thank you for your time swami so you, you gave us a lot of time today we request you to give much more <laughs> sessions like these as well in future and we want your uh, continuous suggestions as well swami sure uh, it is uh, audience pleasure to be part of this conversation uh, many people of our audience audience uh, may be familiar with my face till now uh the english speaking audience must have uh, seen me as an interviewer now i have been uh, you know i am like being interviewed now so this is a not very new role we have done uh, tamil sessions like this before but this has been started just for the english audience we have been getting many comments where people are asking to put english subtitles to our previous videos and also you know to do more english content so we are trying this and one thing i want to say we are not native english speakers if you ask me to speak in tamil i would be comfortable speaking in tamil but uh, speaking in english is not very uh, you know comfortable comfortable for us but even then i think we were able to convey our message i know that we had uh, many grammatical mistakes but again uh, our uh, you know purport of this is to convey the message so please pardon those uh, mistakes and sometimes i feel we have to do this so whenever this english commentators and all they speak our names you know they kill our names you know <laughs> for that we have to take revenge you know <laughs> so we will also kill their uh, language sometime but again uh, uh, you know joke apart let's meet again for this session and uh, today most of these concepts like sanatana dharma hinduism and all they are like you know very controversial so i have been telling my view on them okay i don't say this is the right way because can you join buddhism into this yes you may the situation that is the more important thing but usually dharma uh, will be based on vedas and so i told this i never meant that we must not join someone with us that is not my Uh, you know intent at all so this is my view what is sanatana i was just defining things and i was not uh, you know ad- giving advice you know that is not my view so since it was more general it was more of my opinion here uh, in the later on sessions in the coming up sessions maybe we can have more specific questions regarding karma theory and all where we can speak more about uh, all those things so let's meet up again in that episode till then shimate ramana jayama thank you swami shimate ramana jayama adi adi